Hi, I'm Jennifer Gill Roberts, and I'm the co-founder of the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs, also known as Watermark. And I recently launched a venture fund with a partner, Kelly Coyne, called Grit Labs. I'm Denise Berceau, the co-founder and founding CEO of the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs, now known as Watermark. And I'm the CEO of the Thought Leadership Lab and a lecturer at Stanford Business School. There's only 7% of partners in top 100 firms in venture are women. So I feel like I'm bringing my career full cycle. We're going to fund women and underrepresented minorities in startups. We happen to be focused on AI and robotics, which we think is a really powerful and big opportunity. The name of the firm is Grit Labs, and I think that obviously speaks to what we think is necessary for entrepreneurs to have to pursue these businesses. One of the things that's been remarkable since the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs is where it's led me in my career. As the founding CEO of this organization, I had an amazing opportunity because I had this bully pulpit to get out and talk about these issues of women in venture capital. I had a chance to do press, to do speaking all across the United States, and that opportunity though, to be that thought leader in women's entrepreneurship actually led me to where I am today. The journey that I was on led to a phone call from a friend who said, hey Denise, I want to be a thought leader like you were. And I remember thinking, I was a thought leader? And yet, you know, I was one of three people in the United States who really was speaking out about these issues of women in venture capital at the time. Fast forward now, this is what I do for a living, is I help other people who are on that journey from leader to thought leader. And I look at everything I ever learned from being at FWB and now Watermark to really know that that was the, that was the learning journey for me that helps me to be more effective in helping my clients with their own journeys. Denise and I met at business school, so early on we clicked because we both had backgrounds in technology and had aspirations to continue those careers. I started thinking about how I was always the only woman in the room. In my tech career, you know, and men I met through my father who was a venture capitalist, and I started thinking about why not create an organization to be a catalyst to help you know, create more women entrepreneurs. And Denise loved that, of course, um, and so we started working on it together as a research project and then founded FWA in 1993, now known as Watermark. Um, it was no surprise then that we would come together around this, this research that Jennifer was doing and, and the, the community that she brought together around this, this core challenge of women in venture capital. So we graduated in 1993 from the Stanford Business School and I started a career in venture. But my passion and Denise's was still around trying to get this organization launched. So we put together a volunteer board, we started planning our first event, and it was in October of 1993. We invited about 50, 60 women, everyone we could think of in technology, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, CEOs, consultants, people who would support women entrepreneurs, and I want to say like 90% came. The conversations were so rich and so interesting and people were so desperate for connection that it was, it was one of those highlight moments of thinking, we have something. We have we an have idea. To do we it. have to do it. Right, That's even though we had full-time jobs. And what was wonderful was that on the email list from the very beginning, it was a culture, again, of give, 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 and that this idea that you could have a safe place to ask your questions, that you could have a generous community who would then help you by providing the resources and the connections that you needed, that became really the kind of go-to reason to join, was having this very rich community. On the and over time, I look at it as that knowledge that we were trying to share and the community we created really created the ecosystem for women entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. Looking back from mm -hmm. 25 years ago, did you think that the organization would still be around today? I did. I think that um, we were bold. I mean, we, we expected to make you know, great inroads globally. We expected to have multiple chapters. We expected to have 50% of companies founded by women. We were very bold, very optimistic, and very driven to make it happen. And the seeds were planted here in Silicon Valley, but they have blossomed all around the United States. And, and what we learned here has been useful to all those other organizations. As we started other chapters, as we partnered with other organizations, a lot of the learnings, I think, that we had here I expected we're going to transcend. 
and I think they have. So one thing I'm excited about with you know more women executives in Silicon Valley in particular is that cycle of entrepreneurship. So these are the same women who are going to mentor, who are going to angel fund entrepreneurs, who are going to join these startups. You know, we see that that cycle of innovation and it's so important to have women represented in all facets of it. Denise and I had a very magical partnership. We were co-founders. We had very different perspectives and backgrounds and personalities, and we often hashed things out. But we had tremendous respect for each other. We trusted each other. It was it really informed my thinking about what co-founders could be. You know, I ended up funding many, many co-founders through my venture career, all men until recently. Um, and one thing I've seen is when co-founders are strong and equal and bring different perspectives and diversity, you have a much stronger pattern of leadership in that company and you attract stronger people. And then the other thing is it's really important to, to keep them as long as possible. You know, so the fact that we hung in there through hard times. Absolutely. And good times, yeah. um, you know, for long enough to create that foundation. Um, I think is what made the organization strong. As we did have somewhat different visions at times, but what I always felt like was that this this baby that we were creating was ours together, and that the, it was much stronger because we both brought our best selves to it. And I always have said this, not when necessarily when you're in the room, but so maybe I should say it now. I've always thought of you as the smartest person that I've ever Aww. worked with. <laughs>most important things that we learned in this journey is the power of community, the power of everyone being in the same room, seeing those role models up on stage and being surrounded by other women. It feels so good to suddenly be with your sisters and the sisterhood as it would, we're all in the same room. So today, 17% of global businesses have a woman founder. And, and obviously that's tremendous progress. We still have a long ways to go though. I remember so clearly coming to the first Watermark Conference for Women. Amazing women entrepreneurs, executives, consultants, newbies, college students. It were people sort of of all walks of life, all energized as women leaders. And it was amazing how many people who knew me came up and said, thank you. Thank you for founding this organization. How can that not be the most incredible legacy you can ever hope to have? So what I tell women when I mentor them, uh, notably here at Stanford, is that entrepreneurship is a journey. You know, it's not going to be a singular experience. You're probably going to be a founder or an executive at several startups. It's okay to fail. I think it's most important to attract, you know, the best and brightest people you can, to take risks, to think big, to think about billion dollar businesses, not smaller businesses, um, to, um, Think about your hiring advantages and your authentic self and what leadership style you bring to it. Um, so I'm just amazed at the number of women that are pursuing entrepreneurial paths. Yeah. So if I look back at 25 years ago, you know, I went to Stanford Business School because I wanted to found something. I wanted to understand what it took to lead an organization. I learned a whole lot more every day, rolling up my sleeves and, and trying to get things done. And I say to every woman that I advise now, you know, get out and do it. It isn't just the Nike slogan, it is absolutely about being that fearless self. It is not about playing it safe, it is not about taking the easy road. It is about having a big vision, finding a good partner, and actually being bold and taking things on and getting things done. That to me is what I'm most proud of.